Listen, if you want a highly successful training gym, and a successful life, it's gonna be important that you are tracking some stuff. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what numbers I track with my business, with my personal life, and my finances to make sure I'm on the right path to my goals. I love tracking things. For different individuals, some people will find this horrifying. <laughs> you, you will judge me, and I'm afraid to share it with some of you because some of you are gonna be like, what's wrong with this guy? He'll never feel the hole inside. So today we're gonna cover four buckets. We have personal self-care habits, which I tend to track weekly. We have business behaviors and outcomes, which I tend to track weekly. We have business finance, which I track monthly. And then finally, we have personal finance, which I also track on a monthly basis. So first up, my personal self-care habit tracking spreadsheet adventure began, I think it was October of 2017. And the reason I created this is because, as I often say, if you're successful enough as a training gym owner, you will turn into your clients. So I found myself on the road a lot. And when I first started traveling, I would just give myself a lot of freedom, do whatever I wish. I would drop all my habits, I wouldn't work out, I'd drink like a fish, I'd eat anything that somebody put in front of my pie hole. The solution I came up with, in part inspired by James Clear's excellent book, Atomic Habits, was to create some sort of tracking mechanism to give myself a bit of personal accountability. And all I did was very simply create a Google spreadsheet. I track my sleep. I shoot for a minimum of seven hours and 15 minutes. Meditation, 20 minutes per day as a goal. Reading, 20 minutes per day as a goal. Cardio, and this is a little stickier because I track this one on a weekly basis. I'm looking for at least two sessions per week. So on my conditional formatting field, if I don't input anything, it doesn't get red, but it does get green, and I happen to track the number of minutes that I'm doing dedicated cardio. I also track warming up, done or not done. And I did this because I was noticing that I wasn't consistently warming up. And lo and behold, what gets measured gets managed. As soon as I started tracking it, I started doing it consistently. Then I track my greens formula, done or not done. I take athletic greens every day. I track supplements, done or not done. I also shoot for 80 ounces of water, a minimum of 6,000 steps per day. I keep coffee to under 24 ounces per day. For alcohol, I keep it under to three servings per day. Flossing, is it done or not done? For nutrition, I give myself an admittedly subjective score of zero to three based on how I did that day. And then finally, did I do my gratitude journaling from the day, done or not done? Now, as I mentioned, these are my daily minimums, but what I've recently changed in the spreadsheet, which works really well, is I've created some rolling 28-day averages because, for instance, it's great to drink less than three servings of alcohol per day, but if I'm drinking three servings of alcohol every day, well, technically I'd see a lot of green, but that's not really moving me in the direction of my goals. It's possible some of these habits no longer require this level of rigor. Some of them, as I mentioned, flossing, warming up, they really need to be in there to help build the habit, and now I'm several years in, so arguably I could get rid of some of them, but again, this works for me, it's not a really big time commit, and it makes me feel happy because I see results. Remember, happiness is a progressive realization of a worthy goal or idea, said Earl Nightingale, old timey personal development guy. Next up, we move on to the business behaviors and results. So Mark Fisher Fitness has been tracking weekly behaviors and outcomes for I think seven years now, and this is very important. Anyone that is in Business for Unicorns Unicorn Society will know we now make you do this because we don't know what's going on with your business and we can't help you if you're tracking things. And for a lot of business behaviors and outcomes, monthly is too long. It's gotta be a weekly basis. Another pro tip for you, if you wanna see faster results in any domain, if you reduce the frequency being measured, maybe it's a daily or in some cases even hourly, you will tend to get better results. Just an idea for you. Part of why weekly is better than monthly is if you look at, let's say something like your p &L, which I'll talk about in a minute, that is very backward facing. So most bookkeepers, accountants, they're not gonna close your books till the 15th or even sometimes the 20th of the following month. That's too late. Now it's still good to know exactly what happened when you look back, but we're really focused on behaviors. We're focused on metrics. So we wanna know if halfway through the month, you're way off for your targets for, let's say trial sold, this gives you enough time to take action and get better results. Now, just like all of this, I'm not being prescriptive of what you should track. This is very specific to Mark Fisher Fitness, but on our top level scorecard, we track total active ninjas, total membership by each of our three services, homebody, small group personal training, and classes, new trial opt-ins. So these are 
contact information we got from someone going to a landing page for one of our low barrier offers and inputting their information. We track how many intro offers were claimed or sold for each of our two funnels, for our homebody online virtual streaming classes and our in-person offer, which right now is the Unicorn Kickstart Challenge. We track completed strategy sessions. We track the strategy session conversion. So in other words, out of the strategy sessions we did, how many resulted in a ninja taking action and doing the right thing? We track total membership sold in a given week. P.S. That's a very important one that you basically should all do. And finally, we track the average of all feedback scores received for our services over a seven day period. Do you want help with this stuff? You should click on the link below and learn more about the Unicorn Society, which is our coaching group, because we help all of our members track all this important stuff. We hold you accountable. We help you figure out what goals you should be shooting for. And while you're down there, why not hit subscribe? I mean, you're there. It's right there. Just hit the button. It's up to you. You're in charge of your life. I like you. The last thing I want to say about that top level scorecard and all of the scorecards is we're not just tracking results and those matter, believe you me. We're also tracking behaviors. So for instance, as an example, on the sales and marketing scorecard, yes, we're going to track how many strategy sessions we did and what the conversion was, but we're also going to track how many calls our salespeople are doing, right? How often are we reaching out? So you want to be tracking both things that are reflective of the outcomes you want, but you also want to highlight, you want to measure the behaviors you want to see, because then you'll do a better job of holding your team accountable to putting in the work that will lead to the outcomes you want. Next up, we have monthly business finance numbers. And while I look to behaviors and outcomes on a weekly basis when I'm managing our team, the finances usually shake out best on a monthly basis. So this is done relatively simply by reviewing my P&L. And if you have not watched one of our most popular videos ever, go ahead and check out the video about exactly what I spend in my multi-million dollar gym. It'll give you a lot more insight, particularly onto the expenses side. Because I'll tell you briefly, outside of doing that P&L, which sort of its own animal, that monthly analysis, which I covered in that other video, I also have a very high level scorecard, which I share the monthly results with my leadership team. This gives them some insight into where the money's coming from, from what services, without bogging them down with all the details and minutia that most of them, frankly, are just not that interested in. So Mark Fisher Fitness, I like to break down in-person class revenue, small group personal training revenue, homebody, or our online classes revenue, unicorn accountability coaching, which is our nutrition coaching programs revenue, snatched in six weeks, which is our ongoing six week makeover program. We offer about five times per year as of this recording. And then I have a bucket for miscellaneous expenses. So at Mark Fisher Fitness, this is maybe 5% of our monthly revenue. So this is not a massive amount. And then I track expenses. I don't break that down with minutia because again, for my leadership team, for the purposes of this spreadsheet, it's not gonna be all that particularly helpful. And then I track both profit in absolute number and profit margin. Finally, pro tip here, in the software that we use for our P&L and our bookkeeping, zero, I've set up a bunch of custom reports that allow me to see at a glance these numbers. So this is very, very simple. It's easy to pull this. If you're having to do lots of calculator stuff, you might want to look into a better software or look into the custom reporting functionality that most of them have. And finally, monthly personal finance. So here's what I think is a big opportunity for a lot of training gym owners and probably a lot of entrepreneurs is on a monthly basis, I track the net income from each of the revenue streams from the various businesses that I have a hand in. And then the fun part is I track savings rates. So I'm able to track at a glance what percentages of my net take-home income is going into pre-tax retirement accounts, which are earmarked for retirement, obviously, because I can't touch them until I'm, I think, 59 and a half. I also track post-tax brokerage investment accounts. So this is money that is going into stocks and bond investing, but it's in post-tax money, which means uh, I do have access to it if I want to without a penalty. It's liquid income. And I also track an opportunity savings account. So this is a third bucket that I keep in cash that I build up over time that I can use for any number of investment opportunities. Now, I'd note very briefly, like I said up front, I use an app called Personal Capital. So even though I'm tracking this on a monthly basis to really understand the exact percentages and push myself to save more and more, I do look at this daily. And for some individuals, that's probably a bad idea because particularly lately, if the market is volatile, you might not like that emotionally. So it's generally best to not look at it every day, but 
I can, it's fine. It's somewhat akin to some clients are gonna be fine weighing every day and there's probably some value for people that can do that. But for some people, it, even if weight is an important factor for them and their health and their particular goals, it's not a good scene to track that often because it can be hard to separate the, the noise from the signal. All right, pals, so admittedly, this is very extreme self-care tracking information, okay? I'm not suggesting you need to do this, but this is what works for me. And I think even if you don't wanna to go to this extreme, which most of you probably shouldn't, I think and I hope there might be some nuggets you can take to get better results with your training gym, better results with your own personal habits, and that will lead to an awesome life. So thank you so much as always for watching. It would mean so much to me if you have friends you think would benefit from this. I wanna get the word out to as many training gym owners as possible because my mission is to help training gym run at a very high level to create great lives for the owners and their families and importantly to make impact on the communities you feel called to serve. If you want to get into a little bit more MFF and understand more about my perverse strange habits and how I do those habits, check out my video below about my morning routine. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time for more actionable tips, psychological frameworks, and of course, philosophy.